to crack a coding interview, you have to write the best algorithm to solve the problem. If you want to write a best algorithm to solve the problem, you need to pick the right data structure to solve it. The problem is most of us are afraid of the data structures because they look so complicated. But the truth is they are not that complicated if you understand the basics of the data structures itself. In today's video, we are going to talk about few basic data structures and how to choose the right data structure for your coding interview question. But before we do that, I want you to do me a quick favor by clicking the like button below and subscribe to our channel Sprint Master to get updates of our new videos. With that being said, let's get into our topic. Hello everyone, my name is Ram and welcome to Sprint Master. First of all, let's try to understand what a data structure is and why it is important. For any algorithm we write, storing the data is an essential thing. And data structures define how we store this information. But is it really that complicated? We have been storing the information in our file systems, in our variables when we are writing some algorithms, then why do we need data structures? Because we want our algorithms to be optimal. If you want your algorithm to be optimal, you have to store the data in a way that can be easily inserted, deleted, retrieved, and searched whenever you need the, some piece of information from that data. To pick a right data structure, you will need to know the pros and cons of each and every data structure. Here is what we are going to do for the rest of the video. We'll be talking about five basic data structures that are widely used in coding interviews, and we'll be talking about the pros and cons of these data structures. And at the end of the video, we'll be looking at some questions and determine which data structure is the right choice for that question. The first data structure we are going to talk about today is arrays. Arrays are the basic data structures that you may encounter in your programming life. The basic idea of arrays is you define an array of fixed size and when you define an array of fixed size, a continuous block of memory is allocated in your system and each element is represented with a unique array index. The advantages of arrays are, arrays are easy to define and most of the programming languages do support arrays. And another advantage of arrays is insertion, deletion, and retrieving operations on the arrays takes walk one time. The disadvantages of the arrays are the searching takes walk n time and arrays are of fixed size, meaning if you want to add more elements to this array, it is a complicated operation. It is not that easy. The next data structure we talk today is hash tables. Hash tables is one of the favorite topics for any interviewer. Hash tables are kind of similar to arrays. In arrays, you have an array index position and an associated value. In hash tables, you have keys and values and a hashing function. Basically what you do is, you will pass this key value to the hashing function and hashing function performs some calculations on top of that key and returns back a memory location. And your value will be located at that memory location. Unlike arrays, your memory location doesn't have to be continuous. So you can add as many elements as you want in hash tables. But the problem with hash tables is collisions. Collision is when a hashing function returns same memory locations for multiple key values. You can solve these collisions in multiple ways, but that is not our topic of the day. The advantages of hash tables are insertion, deletion, retrieving and searching operation takes off one time. But at the same time, the disadvantage is collisions. So you might think that collisions aren't that bad. You can have some ways to resolve that, right? But the problem is with the collisions, the time complexity can increase from WOF1 to WOF n as well. So that is definitely a disadvantage for hash tables. The next data structure is linked list. In linked list, we have something called nodes. Each node contains the data value and as well as the next pointer, which points to the next node's memory location. So this is kind of a chain structure and you have access to only the head element, which is the first element of the linked list. And if you want to find any element in this linked list, you have to navigate from the first head element by using the next pointers, navigate into the next, 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 until you find the element you are looking for. There are multiple variations of linked list, single linked list and doubly linked list. So a single linked list is a linked list where you can navigate only in one direction, meaning you have only the next pointer, which points to the next nodes location. In a double linked list, you have two pointers. One is to point to the next node and one is to point to the previous node. The advantages of linked list are one, you can add as many elements as you want. You don't have to deal with predefined memory assignment or you don't have to worry about the collisions at all. 
The second advantage of linked list is insertion and delete operation takes more of one time. The disadvantages of linked list is searching and retrieving any value from a linked list takes more of n time. This is because you have access only to the head node. If you want to find any element, as I said previously, you have to use this next pointer until you find that element you are looking for. So the next data structure we are going to talk about is stacks and queues. Stacks work on the concept of last in first out. Let us say you have a stack full of books and you want to pick a book in middle of that stack. Then what you have to do is you have to take each and every book from the top of the stack until you find the book you are interested in and you pick that book and then replace all the elements which you have taken previously back under the stack. Queues uses the concept of first in first out. Let us say if you are in a line to actually board a bus, then the first person in the line gets a chance to board the bus first, right? So this is called the first in first out approach. The most common use case of stacks and queues is to implement breadth first search and depth first search. Both stacks and queues can be implemented using arrays and linked list. If you have a predefined size, then you can go with arrays. And if you don't have any predefined size, then you can go with linked list. The basic operations on stacks are push and pop. Push means when you want to insert some element into the stack and pop means when you want to take an element out of the stack. Queues have a similar concept NQ and DQ. NQ means you put an element into the queue. DQ means you take an element out of the queue. The advantages and disadvantages of stacks and queues are similar to that of a linked list. So the advantages are insertion and delete operation takes more of one time while the retrieving and searching operation takes more of n time. The next data structure we are going to look at is trees. Trees are kind of similar to that of linked list. In linked list, you have a head node and this head node holds the pointer to the next node and this next node will hold the pointer to the next node and this flow goes on, right? In trees, you have a root node and this root node holds the pointers of all of its children and each of its child will act as a parent and they can hold the children's nodes again. So this is called the tree structure. There are many types of trees, but the most widely used trees for coding interview questions is binary tree. Binary tree is a tree where it has got a restriction of each node can have at most two children. If this binary tree has got an additional restriction of the left element should be less than the root element and the root element should be less than the right elements, then this is called binary search tree. If all the nodes in the binary tree has got two children except for the leaf nodes, then it is called a balanced binary tree. And if it is not, then it is called unbalanced binary tree. I'll be making a separate video for an in-depth analysis of different types of trees and how they are used in a later video. So make sure you subscribe to our channel Scriptmaster to get notified whenever I upload a new video. There are some other advanced trees like AVL trees, red black trees, which can be asked in interviews, but it is very rare. Since the most commonly asked interview questions are based on the binary search tree, let's look at the disadvantages and advantages of binary search tree. The advantages of binary search tree are insertion, deletion, retrieving, and searching operation takes more of login time. The disadvantages of binary search tree are while all of these operations takes more of login time, but uh, it can go up to more of n time if the order of insertion into this binary search tree is off. These are the major data structures that are widely used in coding interviews. Now let's look at some of the problems and determine which algorithm might be a good fit for the problem. The first question is, given an expression which comprises of the branches, check if the expression is balanced. Let us look at some examples and understand if the expression is balanced or not. Consider this expression number one. This expression is balanced because for each of the opening parentheses, there is a matching closing parentheses. If you consider this expression, it is not balanced because there is no closing parentheses for the braces and an unwanted closing parentheses for the square brackets. So which data structure is a good choice for this problem? In this problem, you will need to match the opening parentheses with the closing parentheses and that too, the parentheses has to be in order to make it balanced. The right data structure for this operation is stacks. So basically you will define a character stack and you will be navigating from left to right of this expression and picking up each and every character of this expression. If the character you picked up is an opening parentheses, then you place this opening parentheses in the stack. If the character you picked up is a closing parenthesis, you will check if 
the top of the stack is the opening parenthesis of this closing parenthesis, then what you will do is you pop this element out of the stack. If it is not, then definitely there is some mismatch and you can straight away reject that this expression is not a balanced expression. If it is a matching one, you pop it out and you continue with the expression until you reach end of the expression. At the end, you'll check if your stack is empty or not. If it is a balanced expression, then your stack must be empty. If it is not, then your expression is not balanced and you can return that this expression is not a balanced expression. Moving on to our next question. The question is, check if two strings are anagrams. Two strings are called anagrams if they comprise of the same set of characters. For example, 45 and 54 are called anagrams because they have the same combination of the characters in both these strings. And another example will be silent and listen. So how do you solve this problem? The basic idea is to find all the characters in these strings and compare if the, ca the same characters exist in the other string or not. The right choice of data structure for this problem will be a hash table. So how do you use hash table for this problem? What you will do is your key pairs will be the characters that comprises in the string one and the values will be the total frequency of each of these characters in the string one. You will compute the hash table for the string one and you will also compare compute the hash table for the string two. When you are done, you will compare if the key set of the hash table one and key set of the hash table two are same and if they are same, you will compare if the frequency of each of the character in this hash table one is equal to that of hash table two. Then you will get to know if two strings are anagrams. Our next question is design an algorithm where you will be constantly passed with many data elements and whenever there is a query to search a particular element, the retrieval process should be optimal. For this problem, the ideal data structure will be a binary search tree. This is because when I look at the question, I get two requirements. One, you will be given with a constant flow of data. So meaning you will be continuously receiving some input and you have to store this input somewhere. Obviously, arrays and hash tables are out of the picture because arrays has got fixed size and hash tables can run into collisions. And the second requirement is if you want to perform any search operation on this one, it has to be optimal. So that eliminates stacks, queues and linker list out of the picture because the time complexity for searching and retrieving operations on these data structures is O of n. When you combine all of that, the right data structure will be a binary search tree because the insertion, deletion, retrieving and searching operation on this data structure is O of log n. To decide which data structure is a good fit for your coding interview question, you have to analyze the requirements properly and you have to evaluate which data structure properly aligns with these requirements and make a choice of this data structure. This evaluation comes with practice. So practice more and more coding interview problems. If you want to learn more about data structures in depth, then I have more videos coming your way as part of our knowledge tab series. And you can navigate to the knowledge tab series by clicking the link at the top right corner of this video as well as I'm dropping a link in the description as well. So make sure you check that playlist as well. If you like today's video, please click the like button below and share this video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Sprint Master channel to get updates of our new videos. If you have any questions on this topic or any topic in general, please mention them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching this video. This is Ram signing off.